Are you looking for holiday gifts for people that you love? Even sometimes we have to get gifts for people that we don't love, but you give them something great this year and they'll be yours forever. Go to shop sdcg.com. All our stuff is there. In fact, you can build your own bundle and get up to 25% off site wide. You see what I'm saying? Site wide. Shop sdcg.com. If I asked you to name the three most important sides at Thanksgiving, quick, what would you say? Well, if you didn't say mashed potatoes, stuffing, and the gravy, you'd be making a big mistake. You can't argue with me. Throw away that stupid green bean casserole. Get rid of the candied yams with the ridiculous marshmallows on top. Who invented that for God's sakes? And I know some of you are saying, but we love that. It's like a sweet potato s'more. It's ridiculous. You can't have turkey without gravy. That's for sure. So now while you've got the gravy, what else are you going to put it on? You're going to put it on the stuffing. That's my favorite combination. And then a beautiful little mash of pile? Mashed potatoes? What do you call it? Then the beautiful mashed potatoes, that little indentation with some gravy spooned right into the top of it. That is the, the trio, the iconic, the, it's the trifecta of Thanksgiving sides. We're making them. Roasted garlic mashed potatoes, so good. Cornbread sausage stuffing, so good. And gravy. And we're using backs and necks because you should. And if you don't like that, get your head around it. We're here to make your food life better. Right, boys? Right. Excellent. All right, we'll start by peeling some potatoes. Nestled gently in a Sam the Cooking Guy towel, by the way, now available at our Black Friday sale. Go to shopscg.com. I have three pounds of Yukon Gold potatoes because they're better. Yes, russets are fine if that's what you've got, but if you can get your mitts on these, that's where you want to go. Perfect. So it's very simple. We're gonna peel these. Once they're peeled, we cut them into similar sized pieces. Then we put them in this pot of cold water. We wanna start the boiling from cold. So. Follow along. Peel, peel, peel. Cut, cut, cut. Put, put, put. And when you cut, 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 make them the same, same, same size. So they cook at the same, same, same time. Last one, in it goes. Gonna add a big pinch of kosher salt. A little bit more. You know, potatoes are a blank canvas. We wanna help them along. Now we turn the heat on. Mashed potatoes are better when you start with a cold pot. And by the way, I peeled and then I cut and then I put them in. If you peel all the potatoes, they'll start going brown. The water keeps them from going brown. So peel, cut, put in. That's my style. Now, this is gonna take maybe uh, 30 minutes. By the time it boils, it's probably another 15 or 20. In the meantime, we start our stuffing. And our sausage cornbread stuffing begins with didn't go in as perfectly as I wanted, but that's fine. It begins with sausage, and this is one pound of hot Italian. We're just gonna break this up, let it cook, and then take it out. And when it comes to sausage in a stuffing, I don't wanna turn it into dust. I like sort of reasonable sized pieces, so don't bust it up too much, unless that's your proclivity. And if it is, then have at it. And this is hot Italian. I've said this before. It's not hot that will be too hot for you. I can almost promise that. And don't forget, there's vegetables coming, there's broth coming, there's stuffing, bread cubes coming. You're gonna be fine. It's honestly just about more flavor. So use the hot or I'll get mad at you. And so will Max and Chansey. Right, boys? Right! And you look handsome today. <laughs> <laughs> and when the color's all gone, let me rephrase that. When the red color is all gone, it's now grayed out and it's gray or brown. When the red color's all gone and it's turned brown, is that better? We can take it out. Oh, damn it. Leave the delicious grease, keep the heat on, and add some vegetables. And we're adding about a cup of diced celery and a cup of diced yellow onion. We mix and we let it start to soften and take about uh, three, four minutes. This next step might seem excessive, but just go with me. Two sticks of butter. Because don't forget, there's a whole bunch of bread cubes coming in. You know, you need, it's, look, it's gotta be done the right way. So let this cook away until it's melted and then we will carry on. Now we add some seasoning. We're gonna go with a good pinch of SPG, little garlic in there, about a teaspoon of dried thyme, and my favorite Thanksgiving ingredient, a tablespoon of dried sage. Just do this, drop it in, mix it, stir it around. We're now gonna add one and three quarter cups chicken broth. Could you use water, Max? Yeah, but why would you? Thank you, I almost called you out there. All right, bring this to a boil. When it comes to a boil, like that, kill the heat, drop in 12 ounces of seasoned cornbread. By the way, I hope the 12 inch Sam the Cooking Guy cast iron pan with lid can handle everything. Oh, look it can. Now we're gonna mix this. By the way, on sale right now, shop at There you go, thank you, Max. 
Okay, this is just moistening. Everything wants to get covered in this. Okay, last part. Remember our cooked Italian sausage with the little drippings, and it goes. And just do a good job here, mixing everything together. By the way, as we're looking at this, I'm remembering that I once used chorizo in stuffing, which I thought was a great idea, but it made everything red. The stuffing was red. It was really freaky to look at. It put people off. Or the other way to say that is it was off-putting. And when this is done, you take the lid of your Sandler cooking. I cast iron pan and you put it on top and you leave it for five minutes. There's no heat. Just leave it for five minutes. And voila, we're there. This makes me happy. This makes me extremely happy. Just give it a little mix. Fluff it, as they say. Fluff it up, as they say. I guess fluffing is, never mind. Fluff it, as they say. And that's what you've got. Discernible pieces of stuffing, lots of vegetables, and three bites for all of us. Mm. Mm. So good. Mm. By the way, this was the faster version. Your other option would have been to have put it in a casserole dish. Sorry, boys, I didn't ask. How was it? So good. Mm. It is fucking amazing. We're in love. The other version would be to put it in a casserole dish, cover it up with foil, put it in the oven at like 350 for about 25, 30 minutes, take the foil off, and then give it about 10 minutes to get a little bit crispy on top. But I think if you can go from nothing to way delicious stuffing in about, what does this take, 10 minutes? How's that a bad thing? All right, let's finish off the mashed potatoes. Check this out. Watch. Like that. Okay, let's drain them first. And then I'm gonna put them back into this pot on a little bit of heat to help dry them up. So when most of the water's drained out, drop them back in. And they're gonna get about two minutes in here on sort of medium high heat. I'll just give them a little bit of this. This will just encourage that extra moisture that's in there to go away. And when they're there, take them out, put them on this baking sheet. You'll see why. Now I can get rid of this back here and get my potato ricer. You've seen me use this before. It's basically a giant garlic press specifically for potatoes. You just load it up and then you squeeze. And it's called a ricer because look, it comes out in the shape of rice. Oh, wait, I gotta be doing something before that. I gotta melt some butter. Wait, this is good, this is good. You'll like this. Gentle heat. I have a third of a cup of butter that I'm melting and I'm gonna add about a cup of whipping cream. All right, let those two melt. Now I can continue my ricing. You don't have to use a ricer, but I'm telling you, this is a great way to smooth potatoes. You like the hand masher? You go ahead and use it. The potatoes are done. I have one more thing to mash. Ready for it? I have a roasted head of garlic. Now, this is optional. If I wasn't using this, I would be adding some garlic powder to this, but this is honestly better. You take a head of garlic, you cut off about the top half inch, drizzle it with olive oil, a little kosher salt, wrap it in foil, 425 oven for about 35, 40 minutes, and then you get this, these squeezable, watch, gorgeous, cloves that are sweet, slightly nutty, and amazing. So we just squeeze all these guys out, not the paper. It's real sticky, but it's really good. Okay, so one more squeeze here for the garlic. Now, remember our cream and our butter? We come back and we add some and we mix. And look what you get. Gorgeously smooth, beautiful roasted garlic, but we haven't seasoned them yet. Now this will be controversial for some people because I'm using our BFF, which is kosher salt. Yes, there's granulated garlic in here, but also black pepper. And some people are purists and they want to go with white pepper. And I just, I don't mind the little flex. I like the little flex. I'm happy with the little flex. Let's put them in a dish. I'm gonna be honest, Max hates this dish. Look how pretty they are. Now, if you wanna be really crazy, I would do this. Just a little pat of butter. And then, you know I love green onion, but for this, I love chives. Just another little bit of pretty, pretty. Those are mashed potatoes that are gonna make everybody at your table happy. Hell, just give them to grandpa, let him sit in front of the TV watching sports and he'll be a man that will never leave. Maybe that's not a good thing. I'll let you decide. Well, three spoons, you know what that means. We're all having bites. And a little of that. Chance, Maxwell Avery. And moi. All right, boys, here we go. Uno, okay. dos, potatoes. Mm. Okay, but the first thing I notice, how effing smooth they are. Then I get that little back note of roasted garlic. And all I can say is, damn. Oh. See how beautiful these are? That little jacuzzi of butter in the middle. Oh my gosh. All right, next up, gravy. Here's how we start, and just let me say right up front, if you're queasy about parts of a turkey that don't look like a perfectly cooked breast, you might wanna look away for a second, because what I have under here, well, maybe the two most important things for gravy success, boom, the neck and the back. And the back we cut out when we did the spatchcock Cajun turkey the other day, go watch the episode. These things are all but gonna guarantee gravy success. Did you say the cock in the back? I, I did stop it. 
but we don't want to cook them. We can't cook them this big. We want to throw them in the pot and brown them. So we want to cut them up a bit. Wow, that's a good Sam the Cooking Guy seven inch Nakiri knife, which by the way, you can get at our Black Friday sale right now by going to shopstcg.com. Continue cutting and the back, yikes. Look, I'll admit even I find this a bit creepy. Ooh, it's very Dr. Frankensteinish, isn't it? Great. These go here. We wipe this. We bring our pot and our burner. Turn on the heat. We're going to fling a little olive oil in. Let this heat up for about a minute and a half. And when it's hot, in they go. Your goal is simple. We want to brown these because browning them will intensify their flavor. Now, if you don't have these or you don't want to deal with these bits, you can skip this part and go to the step that happens once I take them out. In the meantime, we just want to brown these all the way around. And when they look like this, take them out. Add a little bit more oil to the pot and then in a rough chop of celery and onion and carrot if you have it. The recipe below says carrot, but I thought I had some, I just don't. These we just want to begin to soften and start to get a little color in spots. In spots doesn't mean brown all the way around. Looking good. Here's what we're going to add next. A quart of chicken stock. That's four cups, 32 ounces. Quarter cup of white wine or vermouth. Okay, it might have been a third, but still okay. And now some important fresh herbs. Sage, rosemary, and as the song goes, what's the last one? Thyme. Parsley, sage, rosemary, and thyme. What song? Uh, are you going to Scarborough Fair? Parsley, sage, rosemary, and thyme. I have no idea what you're talking about. Simon and Garfunkel, you ever heard of them? I have, yes. Yes, that's them. Bring this to a boil. And while you're... About Rosemary, parsley, and sage. And while you're waiting for this to come to a boil, go look up Simon and Garfunkel and find the song Scarborough Fair. What a quaint time you come from. <laughs> <laughs> now it's just about sex and drugs and murder. Uh, all right, we're boiling. We come back in with our bits, our bits and bobs. Little stir, throw the lid on, turn it down to a simmer, and you're going to leave it till it reduces by about a third. That should probably be 15, 20 minutes. In the meantime, do nothing. Well, we're there. Tell me how that smells, Max, because... Unbelievable. Right, Chancy. Oops. Chancy, it's coming straight up on so you. So good. Right? Amazing. It's done some good stuff. Okay, what we want is the liquid. We don't want the solid, so we'll strain those out. Well, I'll try and strain them out. This is going to be a bit precarious, boys, but I think I can do it. So I take this, and I don't have a better setup, so this is how I have to do it. If somebody... Uh, nobody... Can you... Can hold it? Yeah, will you come hold that? Yeah. I'll go slow. Try not to spill hot shit on you. Beautiful. Okay, set this aside. Take this, set this aside. Now, watch. We take this, we put it here. We take this, we put it here. Now we start making our gravy. I'm gonna add to this pan four tablespoons of butter or one quarter cup. And when it melts, we add a quarter cup of flour. We're making a roux, whoever said that? Excellent. Come on, you melt. All right, let's add the flour and we whisk. We let it cook about a minute to get rid of the raw flour taste. And now, if you did not have pan drippings, you would start adding that broth that we just strained. But I do have pan drippings from a turkey, and this is a separator. You pour the pan drippings in, and you can see there's the fat, and that's the part that you want. And the spout is at the bottom, so you, in essence, just get this part. So we can start adding little by little. Look at how fast it seizes up. Now you can see, this is not going to be enough, but stop it when you get to the fat part. This is not going to be enough to make this a beautiful gravy. It's, it's way too thick. That's where the strained stock comes in. We can start adding little by little. Look guys, we're making gravy. And don't forget, again, if you didn't have the drippings, you're just using your stock that you just made. At this point, we're talking as thick or thin as you like. I like it a little thinner than this, but we're going to add two things, let it simmer, and then we'll check the consistency. And those two things will be about a half a teaspoon of granulated garlic and about a tablespoon of soy or soy paste. And every time I use it, I feel obligated to say, this is not making an Asian style gravy. It's just going to add that beautiful umami-ness that will add savory to everything. That's starting to get what I like. I think we're there. So let's kill it and taste it, shall we? Look here, look at this. That's perfect for me. What's crazy? Stuffing was fantastic. Mashed potatoes, so delicious, creamy, and fantastic. This, no less fantastic. This is like Thanksgiving in one bite. This is more Thanksgiving to me than the stuffing was. Mashed potatoes can be any time of the year, but yes, so yes, good. it's so good. And here's the thing to remember. Your turkey comes out of the oven, and however you've uh, cooked it, 
football, spatchcock, whatever. It needs to rest 25-ish minutes loosely covered with foil. That's the time to make your gravy. You do it, get it out of the way. Look, if you don't have the pan drippings, you can make it that morning, make it the day before, you'll be fine. But if you're gonna use pan drippings, which I suggest you do because they really intensify that turkey deliciousness. Wait till it comes out of the oven, cover it, do separate it. And if you don't have one of these guys, one of these gizmos, just pour it into a container, the fat will come to the top. Get rid of the fat and you're good for, and you get to go with what's underneath it. Well, we've set you up for success. Thanksgiving side dish success. Stuffing mashed potatoes and gravy. <laughs> Frankly, fuck the turkey. I could just eat those three things and be a one happy kid. I got nothing else. Boys, anything? Shop the sale. Shop stcg.com. Go get some stuff for you and people that you love. We love you. We're here for you. Go be there for somebody.